This video is going to demonstrate how to model the index arm uh, in, in Autodesk Inventor. Uh, this is going to require three different sketches and we're going to share one of those sketches and, and use it a couple times and then three placed features. Um, so and actually we'll probably end up doing four sketches um, and then three placed features, the, the two holes or three holes and then the uh, the fillets around the edges and I'm going to kind of walk through the thought process of designing this as well okay so first of all it is symmetrical so I'm going to place my sketch at the center of this object and do a mid-plane extrusion or a symmetrical extrusion and I will extrude this cylinder at the top one time and then I will come back in, share that sketch and extrude the base of it as the second part. I'll add a sketch for the boss over here at this end where it's a little bit thicker. I will add a sketch for the dado or the groove that gets cut underneath. I will also add a sketch for this placed hole right here because that's going to be the easiest way to put that. And then this hole is a placed feature and this hole is a placed feature as well. And then, of course, the last thing that goes in are all of your fillets and rounds. So you've started Autodesk Inventor, going to create a new part. And I'm going to create this new sketch on the front plane. So it's important to sketch approximately the correct size and shape. Uh, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but it does need to be pretty close. So I'll make this. You know about the right size and shape <clears throat> oops that needs to be aligned and what I will do is I'm just gonna get my geometry in here you know kind of about the right size and shape like I said before and then we'll come back in and modify it and make it look right at the end here okay so that's that. Notice that this line is locked in place and this line is locked in place because I used the center point of the drawing. Um, I can come in and I can start adding some of my overall dimensions. So looking at it, the overall length is 3 inches plus 11 sixteenths. Okay, so it's 3 and 11 sixteenths from the center of this cylinder to the end point, okay, 3 and 11 sixteenths. So uh, coming in here, my dimension from this line right here to this line right here is 3 and 11 sixteenths. And again, if we look at this here, the, the distance from, again, the, the start point, the center point to the center of that circle is one and a half. I'm not worried about the overall height because when I put in the diameter of this circle, it'll take care of that. So I say, okay, from the bottom to the center of that circle is one and a half. Okay. And now notice if I come in here and, you know, move this up or down, um, it doesn't know that this is supposed to be lined up with that, so I'll put in a horizontal constraint between the end point of that line and the center of that. And then likewise, it doesn't necessarily know that that's supposed to be lined up there as well. So I'll put in a vertical constraint with that center and that point there. So now at this point, I can put in my diameter here, one and five eighths, this dimension right here is 2 inches, and then the thickness here is 5 eighths. So this one is 2 inches, and this thickness right here is 5 eighths. Notice that we are fully constrained, and this doesn't look like much you know, detail, but it's perfect for what we're starting with. So I'll say finish this sketch, and then I'm going to do two extrusions. I'll extrude this as a cylinder, share that sketch again, and extrude this part down here as the rest. So extrude, mid-plane extrusion, symmetric extrusion. My overall depth here is one and three quarters. 
and it's that one that we want. So one and three quarters is my depth mid plane. That's all good to go. We say OK. We do want that sketch to come back, so we'll right click and share this sketch. So now we can use it again. And I'm going to extrude this one, again a mid plane extrusion, and my distance here is one and three eighths. You might be thinking, how did you get that one and three eighths from the part? So it tells me here that 11 sixteenths is the radius on this end over here. 11 sixteenths times 2 is 22 sixteenths, or 1 and 6 sixteenths. So 6 sixteenths is 3 eighths. That's how I came up with that, that distance of 1 and 3 eighths there. So I say OK. And now that I've got the, the first part, my first features, I can right click and turn off the visibility of that initial sketch. Now the end here needs to be rounded off. And rather than doing an extrusion, it's easier to use the fillet command. And I'm going to use this full round fillet. The full round fillet asks you to select the side, the center, and then the side. So I'll pick this side. I will pick the end point here, the, the center face, and then rotate it around and pick the other side. And it automatically matches all three of those and fillets it off. So that's good on that one. Now the next thing to do is to put in the sketch for the boss, this part that sticks up. We'll do that. We'll cut out the part underneath, the little dado or the groove that goes underneath, and we'll put in a center point for this hole that goes here. So start a new sketch, and I'll just start my new sketch right there on that surface. I will project this as you know geometry so that I can use that center point and I'm going to draw the boss in okay so the boss there has a diameter of one notice that because I projected the geometry from this sketch it's already fully constrained I don't have to locate it the other thing I can do is I can put the center point for this other hole in this sketch as well so I'll put my center point in here I need a horizontal constraint between that center point and the center of that hole. And I need my dimension so that I know how far apart they're supposed to be. And that's 1 and 5 eighths as well. Again, notice that I'm fully constrained down here. I can finish that sketch. So next thing I'll do is to extrude this an eighth of an inch. Okay, so see it's got this boss, this part sticks up above an eighth of an inch right here, so I'll extrude that. After I extrude it, that sketch is going to be consumed by the extrusion. I'll just, again, share that sketch so that I have that center point for that hole right there. Okay, so we'll say extrude that one eighth of an inch, and then OK. So there we go. I do need that center point back so again I can share this sketch so that when I put in my hole it recognizes it's got a center point oh uh, let me um, cancel this before I put that hole in I'm gonna go ahead and do this final extrusion here so new sketch new sketch on that surface I will project just the bottom line and then draw in my geometry here okay the dimension from there to there is 3 8 and from there to there is 5 8 and from there to there is 1 quarter Oh, not one eighth. Okay, again, fully constrained. Finish that sketch. We're going to cut that part out. Okay, so it's a cut feature through all. I don't know why it does that. Okay, cut feature through all. Okay. So now coming back here, I can put in all of my placed features now, my holes. So I do need this hole. 
<clears throat> because the center point is already there, it recognizes it, and the hole, I already have the diameter placed in there, so it is a simple hole with no seat. There's my diameter, and it's through all. I can say OK. I need another hole that goes on that surface, and that is the external, the, the, the symmetrical reference, or the uh, concentric reference. So that one's good to go. And then the last one is another hole here with that concentric reference. The diameter on this one is 875. And again, it is also through all. And so we can put that one in. So now that all of my modeling is done, I can hide this sketch, turn off the visibility. And then the last step is to put in your fillets and rounds. All the fillets and rounds in this part are eighth inch. So I'll go to the fillet. It's already set up at an eighth of an inch. And so all I have to do is go through and pick all of the parts that need to be filleted and rounded. And it's just those and then that one there. Oops deselect that one it's the bottom one there okay so that's it the bottom and the backs are oh and then these those two there get it as well but this one does not get it and then okay so that finishes up this part um, again thinking through the process I've got a couple of shared sketches do all my major extrusions first for my base features. Um, this fillet right here is, you know, is one of the exceptions where you would put a fillet in before you're done modeling. Usually your fillets go at the end down here. And then your so it's it's extrusions and major features and then placed features and then fillets and rounds at the end. 